Hello everybody, I'm Anthony Rockers living in a yellow submarine and today I will be, I haven't been doing this video in a long time and I am going to do an album rate, uh, review and I'm also going to do an album rate it while I'm at it. Well, I'm going to do a review and then I'm going to rank the tracks of which one's my favorite. So yeah, just to do two in one video because I can't do it in separate videos because then it's, I don't know, it's kind of pointless. Well, I mean, I'm going to do it in one video because it's still like the same topic. And this is a novel review, and this is a, a band, a groove metal band that's been around, been around, and I must per, and, okay, bottom line is, it's Pantera, and I know a lot of people in the metal community love Pantera, and even I, I, I love Pantera for quite some times, and it's going to be a reinventing the steel album, okay, so, here's my personal opinion about this, well, this album is not really my favorite album by Pantera, I know a lot of people would agree with me there, but hear me out on this one. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, hear me out on this one. So Pantera, they 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 did define the groove metal subgenres because without Pantera, I feel that that subgenres would never been a thing. Well, because I much prefer Pan. Uh, my opinion, I much prefer Pantera in the '90s through 2000, and the album Reinventing the Still was released in March. Because the Reinventing the Steel album was released, and this is the final studio album by Pantera, and and got, okay, I'm just doing a um, um so that when I'm doing a okay, so it was released on March 21st, 2000. So that was a couple months before I, uh, so this movie or this album came out around the time I was a kid at the time when this album came out, and so this is the ninth and final studio album by Pantera, and this album is. Um, it's called Reinventing the Steel, and I know a lot of people out there may or may not be familiar with this album, or you may most likely f remember for some of the tracks from this album, which I'm going to get to in a minute, but this album is the final album because, well, because I don't know fully about the story what happened, because I, I heard that they were going to make the new album, but but sadly, in 2004, struck when Dimebag Daryl passed away from from getting gunshot wounds, where a, cra a, a crazy fan out there, when they were playing live, he had, he actually got shot when that happened. I believe they let the fan go up stage, because you know how they, you know how in the metal community, they let a fan go up stage when they're, you know, in the mosh pit, stuff like that, it's crazy stuff. And that is part of the metal community, too. And one crazy fan, I believe he got up sta stage and shot him. And, it, and it, I believe in the story was where the security tried to protect them for whatever they, whatever happens. But I don't think they killed the kid. I don't think they killed the shooter. I think they did. I don't know fully about the story. Let me know in the comments down below if you know fully about the story. Because I, I, I'm not a big, biggest fan of Pantera. Although I do love some of their music. And this album, I actually do love this album for quite some times. And I even did an album review a, a while. And... Now it's time to go back up to that album review. And yes, again, I'm very, I'm in great health. Just, I'm going to say this in every video I'm going to be uploading because, you know, due to the whole virus that's happening right now, it's crazy. And don't worry, I'm in awesome health. And yeah, that's all you need to know. So this album is, especially to now, this album is 20 years old. <sighs> time flies so fast. I was a kid when this album came out. And, oh my gosh. I mean, I wasn't really a kid. I was like ba I was like a toddler when this album came out around the time. But this album, oh my gosh, this album is actually really good. And there's some songs that I actually loved right away, actually. So this album is um, was released on March 21st in 2000 under the, the record, le record label East West Records. It contains the, the long running time of the band members. The vocals... Phil Anselmo, guitarist, what I mentioned earlier, Dimebag Daryl, and bass Rex Brown, and drummer Vinnie Paul. And by the way, um, another rest in peace because we lost Vinnie Paul in two years ago where he died from an RS um, failure. Because, like, because they, uh, I mean, I don't know fully about the story. Again, I'm not a big fan of Pantera, so don't kill me in the comments down below because I'm not the biggest fan. But I, I do love Pantera. They do make some good, great music. And they did define the groove metal subgenre, too. So, Vinnie Paul, he passed away from, um, he, so he passed away from a cardiomyopathy, which is also known as an artery disease. 
and it was unexpected too. I mean, I didn't know fully about what ha what was happening for him at the time, but he, as of today, he passed away two years ago, and it's sad. Well, I mean, he was he wasn't that old personally. He was around like in his fifties, so he wasn't that old personally. Because he was 54 years old. Okay, so he was 54 years old. So he wasn't that old. He was young still. Dime McDowell was way younger than Vinnie Paul. Because he was 38, I believe. That's crazy, right? I mean, for Dime McDowell, he passed away because he got shot. Not just, like, in the streets. But he passed away. He got shot while performing the songs live. So he was 38 years old. He This is almost reminds me of John Lennon. But John Lennon was actually two years older than Dime McDowell. That's crazy, right? Because Dimebag Daryl passed away in 38, but John, John Lennon passed away at the age of 40. That's Those are still young ages, very young ages in Vinnie Paul. Because if you, cause the John Lennon, because I've, I've, I've talked about the Beatles a lot in my channel, well, quite some times. And I love the Beatles. They're definitely, arguably, one of my favorite bands I've ever listened to. And the, see, and this, this getting a, hearing Dimebag Daryl passing away from getting shot really reminds me of John Lennon, where he got assassinated by him. Well, he got shot while he was outside. I think he was he was sight he was autographing the papers outside and Mark David Chapman shot him and I think I forgot how many shots were there, but I think he shot him in the back, I believe, or in the chest. Around that era or area. But he, he got shot, I think it was twice somewhere around that time. It was crazy. I'm I mean popular popular rock stars are just getting they're passing away from getting shot. That's crazy. That's why you've got to be careful what you do in real life, too. I mean, it's, some things can happen unexpectedly, too. So you got to look on, the, make sure to look at, uh, have a, make sure, be on the lookout for stuff like that happen, too. So, yeah. So, okay, enough of the sad story. Let's just get into the album review. So, this album, um, I wasn't a big fan of this album when it came, well, I mean, when it came, well, I mean, I was, because, because this, it's quite a little, it's a little different than the previous Pantera albums that we listened to in the past. Because in the 90s, it had a quite, quite different sound. Because if you listen to Cowboys from, Cowboys from heck, because, you know, YouTube's going to freaking come at me for saying stuff like that. Because of the cursing, I don't like. But, yeah, this, uh, this, because um, uh, Cowboys from heck and walking has so many famous songs on the 90s. And this one's a quite different stuff. So it's most... It's pretty much a modernized groove metal album, personally. And it does have some two B-sides recorded around this era, or around this sessions. One is Avoid the Light, and second is Immortally Insane. And they were both found in the movies Dracula 2000, Heaven Metal 2000, which is an anime, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I believe it's the remake produced by Michael Bay. Yeah, it is. Okay, sorry. Yeah, hate, hate Michael Bay so much because I... Cannot stand him as a freaking director. We already talked. I, I don't think I never talked about him, but I never like him as a director. So yeah. So there's not really anything in like in, not a lot of information about this album except if you realize in the uh, album cover that this is actually is a photo taken by Scott Calavia, who uh, he who uh, also passed away too. That's crazy. A lot of people. Are, Dying. Well, he passed away in 2003, so that was a year before Dying Back Daryl. That's crazy. Huh? He was a friend of Phil Anselmo, the, the singer. Scott took the photo while attending a party at Phil's house where a bonfire was built. One of the pa patrons jumped through the bonfire, clutching a bottle of wild turkey. Well, he actually had him. Um, I think it was called, um, oh, god dang, I forgot that bottle was called. Because... Was it Wild Turkey? I think it was. I think it was the bottle called Wild Turkey. I think it was either that or was it Dan Sick Daniels bottles. I forgot. It kind of looks quite similar. But anyway, Scott captured the moment and it became the cover for Reinventing the Steel. That's crazy. I, it's crazy people can't, people do this stuff. Do not do, so at your own risk, it, 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 this is on um, at your own risk. I mean, I, I really have nothing toward, against towards people jumping through bonfires. I have nothing against them. It's basically using it doing it at your own risk but yeah it's it's terrible it's it's scary to do stuff like that and when this album when this album first came out at the time this this album mostly received mixed reviews when it first came out because they are not i mean well it's not i can see why they were mixed about this album and i listened to it uh, like as of today i listen and i listened to it all the way through so i can make my final conclusion about this album 
and this album it, it's mostly re mixed re reviews and not only that but a lot of people say that they did like some of the tracks and some of them say that this is not like the old-fashioned Pantera it's similar to like Metallica's Load and Reload and basically like even even the self-titled Black Album I mean the self-titled Black Album which I also have by the way I may also do the album review I am definitely keep on the lookout I am going to do an album review on the Master of Puppets album because I'm gonna have fun reviewing that album because of how much I love that album and yeah this album I it's not really my favorite Pantera album although there's actually some songs I enjoyed a lot so without further ado let's get into the album so the album starts off with as of what YouTube can't I can't say the real words it's actually heck bound but I can't you know because of YouTube H E L L O each H E L L bound yeah this song oh my gosh I love the song right away actually this song is one of the songs I actually loved right away actually this song doesn't really talk much besides when you're um this song because the lyrics I I don't really look at the lyrics before I like when I, while I'm listening to the songs, but now I'm looking at the lyrics, and it it can get pretty tough to listen to some songs without the lyrics. But so far, judging by the lyrics, I'm guessing. I mean, not judging, but guessing what the lyrics is talking about. It's basically about the the crap that they're going through, and mostly in um mostly what you would expect from the title. But you know what's actually hilarious? I actually had a funny story about this song. Is that when I first time listened to this song, not only it, it I loved it right away, but like I love how in the chorus it's Heckburn in Fort Worth in Fort Worth, Texas, and it says in the line help Heckbound, he's Fort Worth. I thought he said Heckburn, but then the last line I thought he said but wait. <laughs> like I was just interpreting the wrong thing of what he was saying. Bill and Salomo. Sometimes, most of the times, you can't really understand what he's saying without the lyrics. Let's just say that. But this song, the music sounds awesome. The instrumentations on everybody's parts it sounds awesome. Even the chorus, I much prefer the chorus over the the verses. The, cor the chorus just the chorus is just slaps you right in the face. It's crazy, and you can feel that build up too. To the you can feel that build up build up to the chorus too, and it's crazy awesome. This is actually one of my favorite out uh, my favorite song in the album. So after I talk about how much I actually do enjoy the al uh, songs in the albums, I'm gonna rank which ones are my favorites. So or in my least favorite. So this song loved it right away, and I still loved it. I can still hate bang it for a while. Hate bang in your own wrist. Don't hate bang too hard. So the second track is called "God Dang Electric." Um, no, like I said, YouTube has been, you know, a little strict. That's why I can't say those words. But it's God D A M and Electric. This song, love this song. I'm not even joking. This song is awesome. The intro, the intro, I wasn't a big fan of, but the chorus, the first chorus, where it, it I love the tempo changes. That's the most memorable part for me of the song. It's not just that pretty cool solo by Dimebag Daryl, but like. That tempo changes where it goes to the chorus is probably one of my favorite parts of the song. Not only that, but I love the lyrics. I love the lyrics because I, I, I noticed because like in this song, is where um he says Phil and Salmo in the line he says your trust is in whiskey and we're the Black Sabbath. Well, uh, you could basically say the first chorus, and, and then in the second chorus he says he says the same line, but he says and we're the Slayer. So he ma he made a reference of Slayer and Black Sabbath. So I'm guessing the reason why he made what I what I what I would think he he reason why he would fit put it that in that uh, made a reference to the bands or threat or heavy and thrash metal bands is mostly I'm guessing because they they had an influence maybe I could be wrong. But this song, oh my gosh, I love this song. This the tempo change is one of my favorite parts of the song. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And um, Dimebag Daryl, he actually commented about this um, this song. He said, quote, we got a song on our record called God Dang Electric, you know. And that is the epic feeling we get when we are we're on stage. Booze up, got a full house, everybody slamming to the grooves. It's epic God Dang Electrifying. None of that Daryl's hilarious. It's the same feeling I get when I'm j I'm driving in my effing car with my stereo on 10. 
ripping slayer or something that kills you know it's now it's not about how mad i am at the world i'm a happy mother effer <laughs> he is too he is hilarious I, I don't care what everybody says crap's good you know we just like to play effing powerful hard edge music he's a rush man i agree with that guy too it's an awesome kick butt song right there and this song by the way fun fact this song features slayer's carrie kane the guitar solo for it, if you didn't notice that. I never noticed that. I thought it was... What's, well, I mean, because I, lo I looked at the fun fact, and I actually... That's actually surprisingly awesome that they got Kerry King to play the solo for this song. At, well, it's actually at the end of the song, so... Yeah. Kerry King... I mean, not Kerry King, but Dime Magdale also said, quotes, it's just so... Happy, um, it, we're getting ready to record that song last year. Slayer was coming through the town on the OzFest, with Sabbath and Car Carrie called me up, I said, dude, I'm bringing something. And quote, dude, I'm bringing something out there, so get ready. I didn't let him know what it was. We brought a DAPA, a tape was with a rough stereo mix of the whole tune on it, and SMF, SM5B, and a mic cord. I caught, excuse me, I caught Carrie before he went on stage. He was warming up, he was, he was warming up, and I said, do you want to play this, play on this tune? Reback on Slayer. Also, he also said, quote, um, Carrie's always pumped up and ready to kick butt on anything. They went on stage and played their set. The whole time I was yelling, Carrie, rip it. <laughs> they were tearing it up. After the set was finished, I saw the Marshall stack come rolling through the door, and here comes Carrie. We plugged him up. Vinny was back there, and he had it all wired up. He had record. Yeah, record. And the first thing Carrie played was awesome. You can hear me at the end of the you you can hear me at the end of the take yelling. Don't touch that. F that's hot. He's he, he recorded it right there on that spot. Backstage at Starplex in Dallas. In the bathroom. Carrie packed his crap up and F they flew somewhere else and jammed some more. That's that's some words of wisdom by telling back. <laughs> It's a freaking words of wisdom from Dimebag right there. So yeah, this song, finding out that Slayer guitarist Carrie King played a solo at the end of the song, made me love the song way more than before. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, the song, I actually loved it right away. Again, I love the song right away. But especially knowing that this is Carrie King playing this guitar solo, I'm just like, okay, now I loved it a lot more. And yeah, this song is really good. This is, I... Personally, I much prefer this song This song a little more over the first track, but not that I hate the first track, but this song, especially talking about the tempo changes, oh, it's great. Not only that, but I love that guitar solo, too. The guitar solo is really good. And, yeah, the next track is Yesterday Don't Mean S, you know, because, you, you know, YouTube. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep saying, like, because of YouTube, because, I mean, YouTube has always been strict and trying to make it kid friendly, which is pretty dumb. But... Because pretty much this song, Phil and Selma was just basically keep saying, because yesterday don't mean crap, pretty much. That's all, all what he's trying to say in this song. I mean, I know there's song, this song is more than that, but but I'm guessing what he's talking about is like, he re, what he's talking about, relieving old reviews is a useless tool of confusion. Don't hold your breath for the turnaround. Coming to the world of uh, endless odds. So I'm guessing that that what he's talking about, like yesterday, he, that he's going through crap, and he he's and then the next day he's just saying that, None of it matters, I'm guessing. So, I'm guessing... I don't know, because I wasn't a big... Or no, don't get me wrong, that intro, that intro, I love that riff of the intro. The guitar solo, I really... The guitar solo is pretty good. I mean, Dying Man Darrell just knows what he's doing, pretty much. <laughs> but, this song is pretty good, and it's it's pretty good. It's uh, not... and I, This song... Oh, yeah, by the way, fun fact. This album, this album, by, by the way... Is one of the most important, if not the most mellow, by Pantera. Because if you listen to like some of the songs on this album, they had a little more melody side, mellow side of Pantera. Because this is not like one of those thrash metal Pantera that you heard before, but this is more of a mellow side. So yeah, this song doesn't really, this song doesn't really have much. I mean, because people, Pantera fans, if you're a Pantera fan, say if you're watching this. Let me know in the comments up below all the fun facts about, not just, you know, about the uh, production about this album, but, like, talk to me in the comments about what was it actually talking about, because I, that's all I'm picking up, because I'm not a big fan of the lyrics, 
Although the music in it, the music in this track is really good. There's not really anything to talk about this song. It's not really much info so far. But when I understand what I was talking about at the time, too. But this song, like, I gotta say, this song has a freaking awesome, like, that instrument in the background. I love that, like, the guitar riff and the drums and the bass, they're all just, it keeps it in tight. Like, it's keeping it tight, and I love it. Like, it's, everything is in rhythm, and I love the rhythm to this song. So, the next track is You've Got to Belong to It. You've Got to Belong to It. The fourth track on this album. That that intro that intro riff Dying Back Dale, you're going to, you're going to have to get used to it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's not that terrible. But I mean I it's I mean this that riff, I'm not gonna lie, that riff is what uh it's one of the most memorable part of this song, my personally. And in the chorus he says like you recognize it while some ignore it and the message you've got to belong to it. So I'm guessing you say like like you like, because I'm guessing what he's saying is like, you recognize what you've seen before, but others ignore what they recognized back then. And and basically he's talking about like, avoid the masses, you've got to belong to it. Like, I'm guessing he's just telling us, I'm guessing he's telling us that if you know this song, then just stick with it. Because like, everybody forgets about it, and Fell Out of Selmo, the lyrics, the songwriting, I gotta say, lyrically... This or music, or I mean, not musically, but like lyrically, this song actually does have a great message. Because in the second verse, he says, "Your your music is your friend." It kind of reminds me of that line from The Doors: "Is when your when the music's over." When he says, "The music is your only friend," and he basically um, he says like so seriously, I take the wheel that never breaks. Some might not understand possession, but yawn your hands. So it's. He's basically telling us that, like, well, for, I mean, for what I understand for the song, it's like, he's basically telling us that if you're very familiar with stuff, he, well, because that's, I don't really, if, I don't know, I don't really have that much, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really much of a, a good, like, speech person, but I'm guessing what Fel Anselmo is saying is, like, he's saying, like, if you know what it is, just stick with it. And there is actually a, another song that actually has a connection of what he's saying. And I'll get to that in a minute. The next track is a hit song from this album. Well, it's it's one of the most one of the if not the most well known songs from this album, Reinventing the Steel. And it's Revolution is my name. What it says right here. It says Pantera's first studio album in four years, including Revolution is my name. So this song is basically talks about the world, and it's and I know a lot of people may they may or may not be familiar with this song, but this is one of the most, if not the most well-known Pantera songs on this album. And this song basically talks about, because um, in the chorus he says, Fel in a Solomo is just basically saying that revolution is my name. It will never change, so here it stays. Forever is my name. And I love that guitar, and that solo right there from Dive Back Daryl. They had a really good groove, I'm not going to lie. They had some, that goes along with groove metal. Okay, if you're ever, okay, I should have said this in the beginning of the video, like, because if groove metal, if you don't, if you're not very familiar with the subgenre of groove metal, I'm not a big fan of that subgenre either. I don't hate it. I actually have tons of respect for what Pantera tried to increase it for that subgenre too. But groove metal is where they take elements of thrash metal, like a fast tempo, like crazy metal sound, and they change it up to a little slower to the mid tempo to it. With with it also includes guitar solos, which I'm so glad because I cannot. Cause there's, cause new metal doesn't feature guitar solos, and it's definitely it's easily one of my least favorite subgenres from metal, and it's not the worst, but it's my least favorite. There's actually some bands I actually like from new metal, but but the the better new metal bands for me, I like actually like I actually enjoy way more than other new metal bands. It's got to be System of Down. I've already said System of Down a bunch of times, but come on, System of Down is a really awesome new metal band. If you if you dislike them, then what's the point of liking new metal? But if you, but there's a, but I, well, I mean, I used to like Lincoln Park. I mean, I was gonna say Lincoln Park, but Hybrid Theory and Meteor are, are awesome, I gotta say. But that's the only thing I actually like from Lincoln Park is only the Hybrid Theory and Meteor. Don't ask why. You you should know this. You should be. You should know why. But yeah, this song at the time, Revolution's My Name, is is this song was also nominated for the 2001 Grammy for Best Metal Performance. That's crazy, right? This song must have had a recognition, too. 
And this song also, by the way, fun fact, had a music video of this song. And it, this is the only music video to have from this album. This is the only, Revolution Is My Name is the only music video that's going to, that will, that, that only had in this album. There's not, there's not another music video from this album, so. I'm guessing they, I guess they made this album a hit just to get more promotion, I'm guessing. But I don't really, um, have a hundred percent sure about it. But, but this song was also voted for 15th greatest hip metal music video on the 21st century by Headbangers Ball. Okay, that's nice. And, so I'm guessing this song basically talks about the world of the problems that's going through at the time too. And it's still, we're, it's still, it's really relevant today. Oh my gosh, this song is pretty relevant today too. Talk about predicting the future. <laughs> but, um, cause, cause, Phil basically says it's time to change. It can't stay the same. Revolution is my name. He, because I love the bridge. The bridge is pretty good, and this song is not really my favorite song on this album. Although I actually love, there's actually some moments I actually enjoyed from this album. Mostly it's the riff is in the solos by Dime McDowell. The solo personally I actually loved. I love how in the intro he says, uh, hidden Easter egg. He says in the first verse he says sixty eight into the world b born. So I'm guessing he said that because he explains to himself that he was born in 1968, I'm guessing. And that's actually a pretty smart lyric right there. That's actually a pretty smart uh, lyrical context. And, yeah, and also the second line, I believe, yeah, he's also, and that's actually pretty much a fourth wall break right there. He said 68, into the world born. So I'm guessing that's basically a fourth wall break because he's actually born in 1968. Phil Anselmo, he's actually born in 1968. 68. Sorry if I tongue tied. And he says in the 70s, breath after the war, life was confusing because of my age. Which I can I can connect to it. I can relate to that. Should my eyes open for tomorrow's grace, I can help the way I am. There's no trust and there's no end. What is my name? I love how in that bridge where he says what is my name a couple times and in, in the bridge, later on he says revolution. That's pretty funny. It's kind of Kind of dumb, but it's kind of, it's almost like pretty much trying to poke fun at, I mean not poke, I'm, I'm guessing it's mo almost like a poke fun at like kids stuff, like say like, what is my name? Anthony. <laughs> Something like that, I don't really know. There's not really anything to talk about this song personally, because this song is definitely one of, if not the most well-known song by Pantera. And, yeah, this, this not really, because this song, it did made it to the charts when it first came out. It made it to... Number 28 on the Billboard's mainstream rock tracks, not too bad. It remains the only single that's originally written to the band to chart in the U.S. during the time they were active. And so, again, what I said about this song was nominated for Best Metal Performance in the 2001 Grammys, but they actually lost to Deftones' Ellis. And However, it, it actually won for 2000 Metal Edge Readers' Choice Awards for Song of the Year. That's good. And... That's pretty much all you need to know. Oh yeah, by the way, fun fact. The music video for the song was directed by Jim Van Bever and produced by Grant Schiller. I don't know how you pronounce his last name, sorry. For 11, 1171 Production Group. The video is a mix of various elements between performance from the band and live footage. It also contains commercial, uh, comical snippets of a sitcom SQ interpretation of the band's childhood where the music where the musicians are portrayed as small kids with facial hair, including listening to Let's... And there was actually some Easter eggs, Let's Step Them 3, Let's Step Them the 3rd, and CZ Top. While jumping on the bed and playing oversized instruments, which is actually pretty cute and pretty funny, personally. The video also includes flashing up the band's influences, such as Black Sabbath and Kiss. I mean, it's no big surprise, because when they show, like... When a metal band makes a music video and they have references to other metal bands, they, it goes to show you how much of an influence they have, so... Not really too much of a surprise, so so this so this song is, is has a pretty um, oh yeah by the way I think the bottle um, sorry I had to go back on this but I believe the bottle was either well I think it was Jack Daniels it kind of looks like Jack Daniels I I had to say even though it's blur I'm guessing just to release it on so they don't have to get copyright from showing Jack Daniels I'm guessing but yeah this song love this song and I love the solo. And there's not really anything what I would express myself. 
and uh, I express what I actually do enjoy about this song. This album was produced by Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl, co-produced by Sterling Van Benfield. And number six is uh, the next track. The sixth track is Death Rattle. Oh, it's this song. <laughs> I actually loved this song for a long time. Even I, this was actually one of the first Pantera songs I've ever heard. The other one was Cowboys from Hell to Cowboys from Heck. Sorry, Cowboys from Heck. It, this, like again, this is actually one of the few songs I've had, actually I've actually listened to from Pantera. And yeah, because a, a lot of kids that were, or even at, at my age, would be very familiar with this song, Death Rattle. If you're not very familiar with this song, listen to the song entirely and li and think about what you heard it before. But you know what? I'm gonna have to spoil it. This song was in the SpongeBob SquarePants episode pre hibernation week, is which is arguably one of my favorite episodes of that season. Okay, so uh, ser seriously, like that pre hibernation week got me pumped up when I listened to that song, cause this is SpongeBob SquarePants. They they that show is basically experimentation with heavy metal. Music. I mean, not, this is not just like one of those new metal. This is one of their groove metal. They try to do something different besides doing like new metal bands or new metal. What was? Because new metal was one of the popular subgenres at the time, along with pop punk and pretty much. I mean, there's other sub variety of genres, which which I, it's a lot to explain. So this song, Death Metal, love this song. This song is actually arguably my favorite song on the album. Okay. Hear me out. I know you may put Revolution as my name as my number one, or you probably might put Death Metal as your number one, but hear me out. This song, the Revolution is my name, for the verses is good. I didn't, the bridge is okay, but I didn't, overall as like a go-to, not really. But as a Death Metal, if you're talking about like as a go-to, yeah. For me, from a personal taste, I actually would prefer Death Metal over Revolution is my name, mostly because of how it's performed too. Not just as always, the vocals is crazy awesome, but like, but another thing is that that ending right there, arguably that that ending riff right there, that ending part for me is one of my favorite parts of the song. Not not only the whole song is one of my favorite parts, but like the ending right there, almost at the end, is definitely arguably one of my favorite parts of the song. Mostly because it just goes faster than the than what you just heard throughout the whole song. It goes a little faster. It's crazy, and. This song, Death Rattle, actually takes some of the snippets, or took some of the snippets, or you could just call it like a a part, a small part of the song, and uses it on the episode for Iron Nation Way from Spot Rose Corpus. I mean, kids who are, I mean, if you are like in my age, you would be very familiar with this song, especially when you grew up with certain TV shows that had certain metal music that for your early childhoods, where in ch when you're watching kids shows, because kids shows back then were so awesome. Now, let me tell you, kids shows. I'm sorry, but for in this generation we're going to have, this generation will never know how awesome the shows were back then. Oh my gosh. And and some shows actually still holds up by not only the theme song, but like still the show itself still holds up. And this is why to, this is why TV show kids shows today will never be classics. Nor will never be. But oh my gosh. Hearing this song on the pre Nation week from the, uh, the episode from Spodrick Squarepants, I was so pumped up. That was actually one of the first metal songs I've ever heard from when I was young. The other one was from System of a Down, which I've talked about how I grew up with the Talk City album. Mostly because my parents had that album when it first came out. I still have that album today, which is crazy, right? And yeah, I grew up with System, System of a Down's Toxicity, Lincoln Park's Hyperdera and Meteor. I grew up with literally metal music. So that's how I became a metalhead. I grew up as a metalhead for like, Literally, when I, literally my twenty, literally my twenty, or I mean, my twenty years of my life, I am just my twenty years of my life. I'm a, like I'm just basically a metalhead. <laughs> but um, yeah, this song is so awesome. This is actually hands down my favorite song of the album, arguably. I'll, so the next track it slows it down, and this is the next uh, four tracks or say 7th through 10 tracks, I was not a big fan of when I first listened to it. First one, the, 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 ne the next track is called Will Grin That Acts For A Long Time. Okay, this song, lyrically, as a song writing, this song, oh my gosh, I actually prefer this song over the last songs. Mostly it's because of the song writing, not only the music. The music's going to sound really awesome. I mean, it's not as awesome as like Death Rattle, as what we hear in the last one. 
I guess because you had to get into the slower ones a little bit more. But Will Grin that acts for a long time, mostly it talks about how bands become sellout quick and they're just basically messing things up for the fame and they're not really doing they're not doing what the fan says and they're just basically are just becoming sellouts intentionally on purpose. And I hate it when bands are just basically becoming sellouts for intentional reasons and they're just doing I mean it's I mean if you're a band member and like here's what if if I got a message for metalheads out there. If you wanted to become a metal or, or if you want to form a metal band and if you want to change it up later on in the future, do not like if you want to, like, if it's if it stays true to yourself, and if it stays true to also the fans out there, stick with it. You can't always change it up. You can't. By the way, you can't always follow trends too, because that's freaking. This is why people are loving Lincoln Parks and newer stuff. So, oh, like, here's the thing. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I love Lincoln Parks, Happy Day, Meteora, but like, oh my gosh, listen to their newer ones. Oh, it's painful personally. But I'm not, I'm not saying I hate them, but again, Chess Bankton has a pretty uh, a good vocals, but I just wish they had more. I just want more of it. I, even as a metalhead, I just want more. Not that I hate pop, but it's just like, even as a metalhead for a long time, I just, even they made metal, like new metal, and then now they became pop, and it freaking gets on my nerves, too. I mean, not that I, not that I'm trying to bash on them, but seriously, it gets on my nerves that people are enjoying this, too. Oh, it's, it's messed up, and... They're gonna find new fans out there that they did not grew up with, and they're gonna like their pop stuff more than their earlier ones, which is sad. And that needs to change. That needs to change. I mean, Death Row. Oh yeah, by the way, the previous track I forgot to mention, Death Row doesn't really talk anything. It basically, it basically mostly talks about Death Row snakes. I'm guessing he's just talking about like snakes that can kill you. I don't know, something like that. But in the first verse, he says, "Numbly numb, bolt, countless and machine." Medicine, sorry. Depicted from years of abuse. Death Row snaking. And they're still faking. Undertaking. Pressure point. Regar Mortis. Basically, it talks about all this crazy stuff that's appealing. Because I don't, I mean, there's not really anything songwriting related. Because I'm, I mean, I'm not a big fan of their lyrics. I mean, actually, um, I've actually picked up on their lyrics. Well, I mean, actually, one or a couple of songs I actually picked up on some of their words or what Phil and Selmo said. Even though I don't fully 100% don't understand most of the times what he's saying but this song doesn't really talk anything I mean I, like again let me know in the comments down below what it's talking about like literally all the songs because I don't really know fully about it about it so I don't care if it's fans if you're going to hate me for it but okay so back to Will Grand that acts for a long time so they're, what they mean by Will Grin that acts for a long time, that means that they're going to keep it true to the subgenres for a long time. Which is which is very awesome, very great choice. I mean, it's a very, in my opinion, it's a great thing to do. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't change, don't follow trends. Don't follow trends. Just stay true to yourself and then a lot of people are going to be impressed with you. Because metal is one of those you either love, it's definitely an absolute love or hate it. Even if you're talking about the subgenres, because metal is one of the has so many subgenres that you have to choose which ones are my, your favorite subgenres. Me personally, it's heavy and also thrash metal, along with classical. Like, because mostly my favorite music, especially sub subgenres, is mostly mostly heavy and thrash metal, or heavy and thrash, or heavy thrash metal, and mostly progressive rock and. And classical music too, and there's more to that. I I don't think I've I, I've I've edited about what's my channel about. So I edited my channel. What's it about? So that you can read it up on what my channel is actually going to be about. So I change it up a little bit, not a lot. So yeah. Anyway, so back to the song. Well, granted, I asked for a long time. This song doesn't really talk. This really song doesn't really do anything. This song was a little slower, although. That chorus, Will Grant X for a long time, really good chorus right there. It's not as awesome as Hector Bound, but it's kind of up there. But it's not as, like, up there. It's kind of, like, in the middle. But the chorus, I liked it, but it's not really my first song on the album. Although, lyrically, it's actually, a, in my opinion, a better songwriting, personally. Because, especially, you can relate to this song. Because he basically, because Phil Anselmo basically says, like, everybody's... F's, F's up for the fame and said he's basically telling the fans out there, Will Grin that X for a long time. That means that 
they want to keep true of the subgenres groove metal for a long time. They want that they're actually one of the few bands that actually stay true to the subgenres, even though the earlier era was glam metal for them. But in the 90s, they defined groove metal. They stay true to the groove metal, and that's they were the sound of the 90s, and also um, and also the early 2000s. So Pantera was one of the most well, it was not the most well known bands from our, from not just our generations, but like even my parents' generation too, or even my older brother's generation too. But yeah, this song much prefer this song over the next tracks. So number eight, for, so this eighth track is Uplift. This song I was not a big fan of it, although the, although the highlight of this song is mostly the drumming by um Vinnie Paul. It's really. Um, you, it's mostly the highlight is the Vinnie Paul's drumming. Although he's not my favorite drummer from any rock band, he's not the worst drummer, not, not by any, but not by a long shot. I've heard worse out there. I've heard worse drummings out there. And yeah, th his drumming is good. It's decent. It's not that awful. I, it's not the best, but it's decent drumming. Not that I hate it, but Uplift is mostly a song. Bus it mostly talks about alcohol and how it helps you to get through life so it basically is a message to tell you like that alcohol is if you're going through a rough time it's basically alcohol is just good for you which kids don't do um kids as kids don't do drugs because then crazy things will happen to you because i i mean don't get me wrong i have nothing against drugs or alcohols it's basically one of those um well i mean not for alcohol but mostly drugs is basically one of those use it at your own risk mostly and some can be fun but at the end of the day, please do not make life about drugs. Please don't. And, yeah, I don't really have any problems to alcohols. I don't have problems. Just don't become an alcoholic because that is going to have problems with it. But this song I was not a big fan of. This is actually one of my least favorite. Well, it's not like one of my least favorite tracks. I actually prefer this song over the next track. And, yeah. There's not really anything to talk about in this song. But... Yeah, the next track is it makes them disappear. So this track is possibly in my opinion the le my least favorite track on this album. That guitar riff by Dimebag Dell is not my favorite. This the, the guitar riff from this song is not my favorite riff on Dimebag Dell. Even though I, I I wasn't a big fan of this song at all, even the first time I listened to it, I did not like this song when I first listened to it. I mean, I didn't hate it. I liked it, but I just it's mostly forgettable when you listen to it, and. I wasn't a big fan of that riff in the intro, just da 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 Like I wasn't a big fan of that riff, but I like I don't know. But this song, I'm I'm guessing what what the lyrics is talking about. I'm guessing he's saying like it makes them disappear. I'm guessing he's saying like I'm guessing he's saying that he wants to um kill. I'm guessing he's wants. I'm guessing he says um he what he's saying like he. When he kills people, it makes them disappear. So I'm guessing he, what he mean by that is like he's saying like he it's better. He, what he means is like he wants to, he has high blood pressure. So he wants to attack all the people just to make his, like make all the people disappear. Especially, I don't know. There's, I don't know. I don't really, there's not really anything info about the lyrics or anything. But the, the overall, like the instruments in the background wasn't my favorite. Like this is not my favorite Pantera song. I would put that against like literally any um 80s albums that Pantera made even the power metal album we're not talking about that album and yeah this song is not really anything talks about it but i'm get this song what i'm guessing is talking about like what he's talking about is like he wants to get rid of people because it makes them disappear so i'm guessing what he means like he wants to get rid of like what i mean i'm guessing he's using it as an example like saying like he's using like the medicines of a painkiller so it can make them disappear something like that what I mean by that, like for example, when you when you're sick, you use the medicine so it, so all the painkillers go. It makes them disappear. So that I'm guessing that's what he meant by that. But just but that's just my example of what he's trying to say. I don't know. You let me know in the comments down below what he means by that. The song it makes them disappear. Although it's not, it's definitely easily my least favorite track on the album. But this song, not a big fan of this song and. Although, I actually liked it a little more the more I listened to it, but it's still not my first song on the album. I don't think I'm not gonna... I'm, I don't think I'm never gonna like this song that much. This song didn't really go anywhere. It's a little slow. But, not really anything. But, 
Yeah, I'm guessing what he means is like he um I don't know, because you let me know in the comments down below. What I mean, I'm guessing what he's talking about, I'm guessing he's talking about like he he's going to his high blood pressure and he wants to attack people just to make them disappear. Cause of, I'm guessing like metal is relief of frustrations. And it's good for you to listen to I mean I'm not strong I'm not not I'm not making you or force you to listen to metal, but you can listen to metal and you'll see you can have an opinion on it. Just don't bash it, because that's just being a hypocrite or being like being a hypocrite about it too. So be honest, be open minded to other music genres that we have in music. That music back then had more music had more creative art than what we have right now too. But the final track, or better yet, the final song by Pantera, it's I'll Cast a Shadow. This is the 10th track, this is the final song from Pantera. And this song, I was actually, I actually love this song way more than the last one. Mostly, not because of the, not only because of the intro, uh, that intro, that instrument, instrumentation in the intro was interesting and actually awesome. So I'm guessing what he's talking about, um, about the I'll Cast a Shadow. I'm guessing what he means by this song, he's talking about, I'm guessing he's talking about, because in the chorus he says, when I die, I cast a shell. So I'm guessing what he means is like, whenever it happens to him, he's going to always be with you. What he says, like, what he means is that when he, whenever he's gone or wherever he's, wherever he's at, he's always going to be with you, which is a very good message too. And even for a group metal band, they actually have a really good message too. Songwriting, songwriting Rise, it's really good, but it's not as personally as better as Will Grand that asked for a long time because it's more relatable, especially when you look at other metal bands that we have, especially comparing to their newer ones to their older ones. Yeah, that song is very relatable too. And yeah, and I, lo I love the ending. The ending is very like, like, because the, I will say the instrumentation, I much prefer the intro instrumentalist uh, instrumental part of the intro way more than the verse I mean throughout the whole song they, I know they repeated it somewhere in the song I'm guessing in the middle of the, like the first verse I mean they repeated it somewhere in the song which is actually my pretty a better part of the, uh, my favorite part of the song <laughs> but this song the lyrics is pretty nice but this song was actually another this was actually the final single to be released by the band and this is actually, the song is actually talking about the influence the band had on the heavy metal genre. And, and Metal Hammer ranked All Kinds of Shadow on number 43 on their list of 50 best Pantera songs writing. And he and they wrote a grand and brilliant way of Pantera to bow out. This browding PNC or Pazian to rising from the ashes now seems unbearably pagany. Agony. When I die, I cast a shadow, and I'll rise, I cast a shadow. For all their fire and fairy, this band had the souls of poets, too. Yeah, they do. I agree. They did have some poetry, songwriting poetry. But yeah, this song, um, kill, um, this song, I think, I could be wrong, but this, this song, I think it could be the longest song on the album. Maybe I could be wrong. But this song actually reach, reached it to number 15 on the UK rock songs on the charts, which is a pretty good sign. But it's not like the best. Like you could tell like it made it to number 15 at the time. But yeah. And also I was a big fan of that out outro. That outro, well, after they after the vocals, after he said the chorus, after he said the final chorus from the band, I love how you can hear like someone talking in the background while they're playing the song. Besides, minus the vocals, you can hear like you can actually hear it's repeated a couple of times, but then after the instrument's gone, you can hear them talking. And I actually turn it up. Well, I mean, uh, the sixth time I listened to this song, I actually finally try to get a chance to turn it up a little louder so I can hear what they're trying to say. And I feel like this the production for this album pretty much is great for what I'm for what I understand what I'm what I understand for the production the production for this song is actually really good I'm not gonna lie the pro overall production of this album is actually really good I mean it's not as awesome as like the previous productions from Cowboys from Heck and Valgar Display of Power either but Valgar Display of Power and Pantera uh, Cowboys from Heck is one of my favorite albums from Pantera and yeah I love how in the uh, at, at the ending it actually kind of got me a laugh out of it I mean, the ending, you can't really take that seriously because, I mean, 
And at the ending, there's not really um, the ending. You hear like after you hear like some talking in the background. You hear like one of these guys talking about get ready for some get ready for something. And then you hear like a kid saying okay. It, it, is it me or does he kind of sound like Eric Cartman from South Park? Personally, he sound he kind of sound like Eric. For some reason, he sounds like Eric Cartman from South Park. Where he says okay, <laughs> like something like that. Something about it. I love how in the background they're just talking. I love how he's one of them said kiss my. Kiss, kiss my donkey, a eh? Dracula. <laughs> that kind of got me a lot, but I, that was unexpected. I did not expect that. That like the production of this song. I'm guessing they were trying to be more on the progressive rock. I'm guessing. Well, not progressive rock. Well, well I mean, it depends. I mean, I guess because they want this is Pantera's version of going to more progressive rock. Pretty much, when, when progressive metal. Well, I mean, they're not progressive metal. They're mostly defined as groove metal because of the way they got the instruments done. So, there's not really anything to say. This song, I'll Cast a Shadow, I actually love this song way more than the other ones. I mean, Will Grin that acts for a long time grew on me a lot more than the I'll Cast a Shadow, although I'll Cast a Shadow grew on me a little more than the the eighth and the ninth track. But I know many people will gonna put I'll Cast a Shadow as their favorite song in the album. This is actually a really good song, I'm not gonna lie. Even though it's not like my favorite song, like how, how intensely awesome it is, but if you're talking about like as a songwriting, yeah, pretty good. Not only that, but the production for it is really good too. So overall, um, uh, if you had to uh, tell me what should I give it out of 10, I would give it personally a 7.2 or 7 out of 10 stars. It's not really my favorite Pantera's albums. I didn't love it as much as the previous ones. Especially if you're comparing them to like Cowboys from Heck or Falker Display of Power. They had a way better production and way awesome songs, personally, than this one. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is still a good album. I didn't hate this album. They actually had some awesome gems. They, had, they actually had some very awesome hidden and underrated gems on this album, too. So, so the so next part is going to be ranking. So, my least favorite... Track my tenth, my number ten for me is it makes them disappear. I was not a big fan of this song, although it's not a terrible song. I just this song slowly grew on me more than the the other ones. Number nine for me is uplift. It's like I said, it's the highlight part. It's the drumming, and I didn't hate this track either, but it's good. That, the instrumentation after the drums kicked in, which actually pretty good. There's not really anything to talk about. I've already talked about what was the song about, so I'm just gonna say like. Um, so I'm just basically going to talk about what's my favorite songs on the album. So I already talked about what the songs are about, so yeah. Number seven for me is Roll Grin That Acts For A Long Time. So this song, don't get me wrong, that song is actually really catchy. I mean, I can't say catchy is pretty cheap because, because, okay, I just try to edit it out, edit the list I have. I mean, I didn't write it down. I mean, because I... Because I, I didn't write it down, but next time when I'm doing like an album ranking, I'm going to write it down this time. So, yeah. So, number eight for me is Will Grin That X for a long time. It had a really, it, it grew on me more than the next, the, 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 the next tracks on there. And I actually liked it a little more because of how, it's, it's, it might be a little more memorable. But number seven for me is, I'll catch. It may be number, people's number ones or number two or threes on this their list. It's, for me, it's number seven. It's Out Cast a Shadow. Although it's actually a really good song, especially I, under, I understand this is their final song they made. I don't hate it. If you're talking about like as like how awesome it is, but I I don't hate the song. I actually enjoyed it. This is actually one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm not gonna lie. So number nine and ten for me are my least favorite. So number eight through number one for me are my favorite ones. Well, no, no, no. Actually. I changed my mind. Number eight, not, number eight, and number eight, nine, and ten. Those are my l least favorites. But number seven through number one for me are my favorite ones so far. So number seven is I'll Cast a Shadow, and I've already talked about how much I loved it. Number six for me is Yesterday Don't Mean Crap. This song that like I've already talked about how awesome that instrumentation in the intro was awesome, and I've already talked about how much I actually do enjoy this song. But yeah, there's not really anything to talk about this song. Number five for me is the hit song, Revelations by Name. You may put this on your number one list because it's a hit single. But this one's for me, number five. I've already talked about it too. It's not really my favorite. I mean, it's actually not one of my favorite. Like, it's great, but it's not. I didn't like it as much as number four or three or two or one for me. 
But it's so good. It still had gems on them from even from the band too. Number four for me is you've got to belong to it. Number three for me is Heckbound. I know you may probably put this on number in your top three too. So my, number three for me is the opening track of the album. And I should have said number seven is the closing of the album or closing of the band. <laughs> but number two for me is God Dang Electric. This song, oh my gosh, this song, I'm always going to jam out to this song. Well, no, actually, Heckbound and God Dang Electric and number one for me, all, all top three are the ones I'm always going to jam out whenever I hear them. Heckbound, I mean, because the top three for me are the, going to be the songs I'm always going to jam out to. Although, don't get me wrong. All the songs on the albums I'm going to jam out to once in a while, but I'm not really going to be like jamming out like crazy like the top three ones personally. So number two, I already said God Dang Electric. So number one for me, I know you may probably rank this number two or number three or four, but number one for me is Death Rattle. Not that because I grew up with this song, mostly because I how I grew up with one of my first, not because of how I grew up with as a kid that grew up with kids shows that has metal music in it, but Death Rattle for me has actually been one of my favorite because, like, Death Rattle, I grew up with the song a long time. I've actually loved the song for a long time, even when I was young. It got me pumped up. I mean, it just got me a more open mind. It got me... Uh, it opened the door perception for me to music, mostly when I was young. Because especially when I was young, even as... as as Because uh, especially if you're a Pantera fan, especially viewers as my age, you grew up with certain music that you remember as a kid, and then suddenly... You listen to it. You listen to it right now. You're like, oh my gosh, I remember this. It takes you back to where where you're coming from, from an environment that you live from, and yeah. So Death Rattle is my number one favorite, mostly because this song I will always jam out to it. When when I hear this song, I'm gonna jam the heck out of it. I'm gonna start headbanging. I don't want to hit, but again, headbang at your own risk. Don't headbang too hard, cause you're gonna have some horrible neck problems like I did back then. My first headbang was one of the songs from the Beatles. One was Held to Skeleton. One was also Birthday. I mean, come on. It was the 60s rock metal or hard rock and metal music in the 60s. They had some awesome gems. And also Led Zeppelin too. I mean, there's other metal and rock. That's how I became. You could basically say Pantera's Death Well is basically an early, an early taste of metal music pretty much. <laughs> But don't get me wrong, I, I, I know a couple of, I know a lot of me metal music from different bands that I'm not very familiar with. But, yeah. So, number one for me is Death Roll. So, let me know in the comments down below, not only the song for information, let me know in the comments down below, what will you rank it as your least favorite to favorite? So, my least favorite is, it makes them disappear. My number one favorite is Death Rattle. So, what's your, so, if you had to rank them, what's your least, if you had to rank them in order, what's your least favorite songs to your favorites? Because I know many people will put Outcast of Shadow on your top three, but mostly because it's the final song and not only that, but the production for it. Don't get me wrong, I love Outcast of Shadow. I'm always gonna like. I'm always gonna love it. But this song, I don't know. This song, I was gonna say, it may or may not be a tear jerker for you, because especially realizing this is the final album by them, you may have a tear jerker from your eyes from listening to it. I don't know. I mean, I didn't really because I. I almost had a tear jerk and listen to that song, mostly because I know him, but this is the final album by him. But Pantera is an overall band. So Pantera, personally, I'm not a big fan of Pantera, although a lot of metal heads love Pantera. And even as a metal community, they love Pantera. Don't get me wrong, I love Pantera. I'm always going to jam out to some of their songs that comes out on the radio. If some of their songs come, pop up in the radio, then I'm, I'm going to jam the crap out of their music. It depends on some of their songs, too. So, yeah. Overall, what did you guys and girls think about this album, Pantera, Reinventing the Steel? Okay, for, before I close this video, I'm, I'm going to show you what this album looked like. Because this is... Oh, so I almost fell down. So this is what the album looked like. And, and the, I love how in the, in the left side, it says the title of the album. It just says Pantera. I love that. This is actually one of my favorite album covers by Pantera. It's actually one of my favorite album covers. What I mean is like the booklet. This is actually one of my favorite album covers. This actually might be my favorite album covers by Pantera, actually. Maybe. It could be, I could be wrong. But, but for what the red ones and the white, the white text says, it says Pantera's first studio album in four years, including Revolution is My Name. And, of course, the digit numbers. Okay, so this is the side, what it looks like. I don't think you can see very well. But in the back, this is the back of the album. You can't really read well. I understand you can't really read it well. But look online, too. So... Um, I'll show you what it looks like when I open it up. 
So this is CD, and when you open it up, you get, hey, it's the band members. Hey, it's Phil Anselmo and uh, Vinnie Paul, Rex Brown, and Dimebag Daryl right there. Like, those are four band members taking a picture. Hey, they look so, they look so hippie. <laughs> they look so hippie in this era, personally. Sorry, guys. I gotta put the CD back. <laughs> but, okay, so the, I'm gonna show you what the booklet looks like. There's not really much anything pages. It's not a lot of pages, so this is gonna be pretty short. So, there's not really any, a lot of pages in there. But this is what the album cover looks like. This is actually my favorite album covers by Pantera. So, this is what the first page looks like. It has the same um, the song titles on the right side. Looks pretty cool. It only has like I think like around like um, it has six pages, so that's not that much. And it basically shows up the production, like who made this, who made this, and who played this. It's basically all you need to know about it. So yeah, the final page is another. Uh, well, actually, the the left side is basically who does this and who does that one. And in the right side, they want to, um, in the right side, they say, in the right side, they say, um, they give, um, they want to give thanks to anyone out there that had an influence on this album, so. So, if you, uh, if you are Pantera fans and you want, if you want, if you, um, going to be asking me in the comments down below if you, if you want to buy this album, go ahead and buy this album. This, I'm not saying you have to, but it depends on, because this is just my personal opinion about this album. Sure, it may not be your favorite album by Pantera, but this album actually can grow up you, uh, grow on you for quite a bit. So, if you have not yet, go ahead and buy the CD. This CD is actually really good. It's not really my favorite Pantera's album, but it's not terrible. I'll give it personally a seven out of ten because the final tracks on the album didn't really grow up. Uh, it didn't. It wasn't. It didn't really stood up to me than the previous tracks and one through the first through six tracks. It didn't really grow on me that much. But overall, as an album, I actually do enjoy it. I'll give it personally a 7 out of 10. So, 7 out of 10 stars, approximately me. It wasn't like the best album by Pantera. It, no, I don't know means, I don't hate it. I actually loved it. I actually, I actually somewhat loved it. I mean, that means that if I play this album, I'm just going to love this album. So, if you are new here, if you are new to this channel, I not only I review Pantera, I listen, I review mostly, um, not just like metal hit like metal albums or metal bands. I mostly I also do a I mostly do a music review. I mostly review on music and how I feel about it. Not just metal music, but like like just any types of music what you like. I I the only pop um, I I review like I review like the Beatles. I review like classic rock. I listen. I review like you know classic pop stuff like that. You know if it's not. Well, I mean, if you're if you're new here, just check out my other videos and check out my reviews. I need to update my playlist because I've been updating my playlist for a long time, even after I haven't been uploading videos lately. So, yeah. So, if you guys and girls enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends and family if they are Pantera fans out there, and so this album is basically a goodbye to us. Pantera fans because look it's in this song Al Castle Shadow it did say when I die so I'm guessing he's just basically saying a goodbye to us I mean he's still alive he's still alive Phil Anselmo he's still alive and Rex Brown they're the only members that are still alive today so well so far what I understand for what I know but yeah they're the only members that are still alive which is good they're like this is kind of reminds me of the Beatles where like half of the Beatles are gone half of the Beatles are gone and half of them are still alive like John Lennon and George Harrison are gone, but Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney are still alive today. That's sad that half of the members are alive is that, and half of them are gone. That's sad. But like I said, like I like we always say, even though they're gone, they they kept they kept what made it. Well, I mean, better, better yet, they may be gone, but their music will live on and continue to influence. Even though Pantera didn't really influence on a lot of people. I, I think Pantera Influence 7 does, I believe. I've heard what I've heard Pantera Influence 7 does. 7 does, I'm not a big fan of 7 does as a band. I may or may not do a rancy on how much would I feel about 7 does. I mean, I don't hate 7 does. They're they're a, another new metal band at the time. I don't hate new I I don't really hate new metal. I don't really hate 7 does. I just don't really like them as a band that much. Their music for me are way too mellow and I may probably do a review on 7 Dust person. I'm going to do a review on them later on in the future. 
But later on, maybe in the next video, um, what future can um, of what future can tells. But I'm actually probably I might actually going to do a Metallica's Master of Puppets album review next. I may probably do it next. Either that, but you know what? Ne next, I might probably do No Doubt's Tragic Kingdom. I actually have that album for a long time, and I don't think I, I don't think I never talked about No Doubt in the channel, in this channel. But it's going to be the next video. I'll tell you that. But I'm going to review No Doubt's Tragic Kingdom. So if it's not your thing, if Sky Punk is not really your thing, then you may or may not like this band. But okay, so I'll, I'll, so stay tuned. If you like, if you love No Doubt, or if if you're a big fan, of, if you're if you're a fan of punk or punk rock as a genre, even though I'm not a big fan of the punk movements, but I gotta give them respect for even as a movement at the time, even though it's not my personal favorite. But I gotta give them respect for it. So, if you are going to be asking me in the comments down below, should you do you want to buy this album? Go ahead and buy this album. I'm not I, I'm not saying you have to or you want to. But go ahead and buy this album and tell me what you think about this album. You may or may not be disappointed. I don't, I don't know. You, you will let me know in the comments down below. If you buy the CD, and the reason why I want you to buy the CDs or like records because of the transitions. That's why, that's why a lot of you know these modern kids always listen to music on the internet and they don't like buy albums and CDs or records because they don't, they don't get a full experience of the album. And it's sad. This generate th th this generation is like that too. So, again, buy this album if you want. If you want to, I'm not saying you have to just to become a Pantera fan. You don't have to. I just bought this album because I listened to it that had "Revolution's My Name" and I listened to the other tracks. And I, I didn't want to listen to a lot of tracks on there. I just listened to um two tracks, which was um "Death Rattle" and "Revolution's My Name." That's it. And I bought it and I listened to it all the way through. I actually do enjoy it. So, if, go ahead and buy this album if you want to. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to. So, um, my social media are in the description. Facebook, Instagram are in the description. And that's all I have to say about this video. I keep snapping. I keep smacking my lips. <laughs> I keep smacking my lips every time I'm done talking. Um, uh, if you, uh, I will see you in the next video. Change the world. Peace and love. And I forgot. <laughs> wow, I am not... Having a good day. I am tongue tied. I am forgetting every. I forget. I have a short time memory loss. Oh, change the world. Peace and love. And keep headbanging. Keep rocking. Oh.